All right, we're here with Pete, one half of Rank 1. Uh, it's been exactly one year to the day. I checked it. One year since we last talked. Uh, about an hour different. Um, what's happened in the last year that's been exciting and new? Uh, what, what happened? Well, uh, we moved studios. Busy with it at this moment. Benno is doing a studio at his house. I'm doing it at my home. We did Beats at Rank1.com. And we did Top Gear Opus 17. And busy with the next one. And that's it. We we try to do two releases a year and that's it. Has Benno started DJing? Last time we talked you said he was learning or trying to, or has he just buggered off with it? Benno never starts DJing. He knows how to do it, but he doesn't like it. What's, he's telling me that when he has to DJ, he has to play records he, d he doesn't like. So that's why he's not DJing. Uh, we talked about a live set, and I don't see any gear here tonight. Why is that? Well, a live set has a certain couple of months of preparation. And Benno called me this week. He said, what about a live act? I said, it's okay with me. And maybe we do a Sensation tour, live act. So maybe a 2006 Sensation. I think it's in Holland, in Germany, in Spain and in the UK. I'm not sure yet, but maybe we do live there and... I have to talk with Benno because Benno hates traveling and maybe we do guff. Wow. How, how difficult is it to do a live set? Is it just sort of, I mean, you said months of preparation. Now, is that, you know, every day there or is that, oh, well, I have a weekend here. Let's uh, meet together for an hour or whatever. No. Uh, normally, it's two months every day during the week. So Monday till Friday for us. And the thing is, uh, I use the knobs. I have a Dupfler Regelwerk, it's 24 uh, faders and knobs, so I have to, we use it with Ableton Live, and I press a button so things go on and off, and Benno has to play live, so you have to practice a lot, because uh, this, the oldest songs of us are very uh, long melodic songs, so when I press at a button, and the bass line is changing, and Benno is playing, it's like, wow, you know? So you, you have to, to learn, so probably one month practice and one month preparation. Taking a look at your production, what has shaped the new styles of last year, from Top Gear to Opus 17 to Beats at Rank 1? They're all very different. Well, making mainstream trends gets bored. When you do music, you like changes, you know? if let's say Madonna or Michael Jackson or whoever does every time the same, it gets bored. And, well, Beats at Rank 1 and Top Gear are a bit more tech trends. And I think the next one is going to be a bit more poppy with vocals. So Rank 1 is not trends only, it's dance music. It's what you feel like producing for that week or month. Yeah, well, you have to make what you like. Why isn't Beats at rank1.com a valid email address. It was a valid email address. The only problem, I talked to Benno about it, and it was four or five months after release that we opened the Beats at Rank 1, so way too late. <laughs> what new stuff do you have coming up? You said possibly a new album last year at this time. Live drums on your behalf, piano on his behalf. I think we're waiting for this. Well, a lot of people are waiting, but you have to do an album if you have to, well, bring something to the people. If you don't have anything to say, don't do an album. So when there are enough nice tracks, there will be an album. And maybe it's in about three months, or maybe never, who knows. But the goal is an album, but you have to do nice tracks and just wait and see. You can't push progress. No. No, no, it's not like, uh, well, uh, March 2006, there has to be an album. No, no. Just do what you like. You've done quite a few uh, mix compilations in the last few months. Uh, how important are these for publicity, say, versus a radio show? Uh, I think a radio show is even more important for publicity because uh, you can listen to a radio show every day, every week. It depends on the radio show. And a uh, mix compilation is only one thing. It's in the shops. Well, now rank one mixed, blah, blah, blah. And that's for one week and then it's over, you know? So I think a radio show is more, it's better for the publicity. Anything on that front coming from you guys? 
We've been asked uh, by American guys for a television show for uh, one hour on internet TV. We are thinking about it. You're off to Tokyo next month. Uh, what's the atmosphere like? Do the crowds really get into it? And how would you best describe the scene there? Well, last time I was there in 2000, 2001, and the, the Japanese people are like, put your finger in your nose and they do it. Put your finger to the right and they do it. So really, uh, they look at you, they follow you. It's You're some sort of god over there. It's, it's nice, but... I prefer being human. Is a place like Asia very ethnically diverse in this scene? No, no, I don't think so. Because every record we release, uh, the Japanese company uh, picks it up and releases there as well. So I think, no, they are not behind or in front. They just follow. What's the most ethnically diverse region in the world that you've seen where blacks, whites, Hispanics, anybody is together and just enjoying the music? I think it's Canada, because in Canada you have Asian, you have people from Poland, from from Europe, from Mexico, from the south of America. It's probably Canada. Do you think that's because of the makeup of the country, or is it because of the music and the atmosphere itself? I think the makeup of the country. What is your opinion on urban music versus the club or rave scene? I mean, would you ever go to a 50 cent concert? Well, to be honest, you have hip-hop, you have R&B, and there are some uh, hip-hop and R&B tracks which I like, but I prefer singing and not talking, and that's all I've got to say about it. But, no, the thing, music is music, and, well, in dance music, everybody has his own taste, in urban music, everybody has his own taste, and that's, that's good. If we all love the same woman, it's really a problem for the woman. <laughs> How was your experience tonight getting dragged out to a small little bar and being greeted with loud cheers and you go on, oh, I'm just here to play music, right? I really enjoyed it. You know, the thing is, people are talking about music, 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 and that's good, but sometimes I like about it to talk about other things than music. And I told some people they were completely into music and trance, and I told them there's more on this world than music only. And that's important to know. What what things is there more important that you see, say you walk into a club and there's someone there that's your biggest fan, that lives and sleeps and dreams and breathes trance in the scene. What do you say to them? What are they missing? Well, you have relatives, you have friends. Yeah, there's so much in this world that I haven't seen, you haven't seen. You know, music is entertaining. Entertain yourself for one night and do some other nice things on another day. So if you had a chance to do something in the world, whether it's skydive or go hiking, <laughs> something something wild and crazy and as far away from a, a dance floor packed with a bunch of people, what would it be? It's, it's a difficult question. You know, if I do a bungee jump or whatever, my back is broken into two pieces, so not for me. But I have a strange thing on this world. I'd like to help people. If some relatives or friends have problems, they can talk to me and I try to help them. And that's what I really like. More, so. more people should do that. Listen to each other and no stress. No need for stress. If you're late, you're late. You can't do anything about it. Very good. Well, I'll uh, leave you to your night and we'll uh, be banging away an awesome set tonight, I'm sure. I hope so.